Well, I come at Light Foray from a, a very different angle than a lot of people do because my background is what we call today user experience. Um, and the way I got started in the user experience field was 36 years ago as a graduate student in experimental psychology. Um, I was getting my PhD. Um, I got assigned to a project um, working on the Xerox star. And those who you don't know the Xerox star, essentially, if you've ever seen uh, the movie called The Pirates of Silicon Valley, it is where Jobs got the idea for the Lisa. And more than the idea, he basically copied what the Xerox was doing at Palo Alto Research Center and uh, took it forward to the Lisa, which then did, wasn't a commercial success, but gave him the experience to carry forward into the Macintosh, and thus the launch of the GUI. So my initial role with user experience was designing the menu-driven interface for the Xerox Star in 1977. When I finished my PhD, I went on to work for the founders of Dragon Systems, who created a product called Naturally Speaking. And my role was designing the user interface and the user interaction between uh, the speech recognition software and the digital response technology that went behind it. And after working in that field for three years, I then went off and spent the next 28 years in marketing. And I've been the vice president of marketing at EDS, at Ernst & Young, at Unisys. And then I saw a trend coming that your CEO talked about at the very beginning, LifeRay's CEO, um, Brian Cheung, uh, this morning, which is uh, the CMO is going to become the greatest consumer of IT services. And I saw that coming about four years ago uh, as vice president of marketing for Unisys, a $4.5 billion company. Um, my division, actually I supported the, um, the uh, global managed services division, which is most of the company. It's a $3 billion division. And I was running the marketing organization and I was approached by the chief technology officer at Unisys. And he said, all of our stuff is internal. Our clients can't touch any of our systems. They can't interact with it. The future of IT services is going to be via the web. Can you come back to your role? We see you got your PhD in computer user interface design, or, or as it was known at the time, human computer interaction. Would you come back out of your marketing role, lead the vice presidency, and come and lead our initiative to move to the web? So that began four years ago. And that started the process, what we now call people computing. Um, two years into the project of beginning to move our enterprise systems to the web, which we were using LifeRay, by the way. Uh, internally, we were using uh, SharePoint for our internal facing systems, but we wanted to go open source. So we went with LifeRay four years ago. We started out with version 5.1, went to 5.2. Then we leaped to 6.1, and we will eventually go to 6.2. But as part of the whole people computing concept was the idea that we wanted to make information available to the users, to our clients, to allow them to manage their own IT services. When you're selling $3 billion worth of IT services, we have 23,000 employees. About 20,000 of those are involved in delivering those services. We wanted to provide the interaction to allow not only Unisys employees, but our clients to begin to manage and order and be able to support their own IT services that were being delivered from Unisys or even other suppliers. So today's challenge, what we find, is we have data centers all around the world uh, supporting um, approximately 400 major clients of Unisys. These are for global 1,000 companies. But what has traditionally gone on with the enterprise environment is that the information coming out of the data centers in terms of how are the IT services being delivered, what systems are up, what systems are down, uh, the throughput, uh, the uptime, all of that information was being captured by the enterprise systems and was being fed on a regular schedule, not the user schedule, but the schedule of the IT group. So the data center basically drove the data to the users. What we started four years ago was a movement to bring the user, the information to the users based upon the user's demand. 
So that's when we began developing with LifeRay, also as Brian pointed out this morning. Um, basically, we got into that version when we tied into the back end system. So we began putting on the back end all of our IT service solutions information systems. That's a mouthful. But all the systems that we're throwing off information about where, how, are the, how is that client systems up? You know, how are they performing? What's the throughput? You know, what are the network threats? We have security management services, et cetera. So we needed to change that into something where we could drive that data to the users and the consumers. But we had to do that through role-based assignments, which again, we use LifeRay to begin that process of segmenting the information into a way we could make it consumable by the end users. And what really began to drive the need to create a much better user experience was the consumerization of IT, particularly when Apple came out with the iPhone and the iPad, which began a whole revolution that drove then, of course, into the Android and Google, and began the whole UI revolution where the idea was is nothing's supposed to come in an instruction book anymore. No more user guides. Everything's supposed to be intuitive. Well, that became our objective. So what is the enterprise services portal? And after I named this and after the first day of being at this conference, my concern was I thought, well, maybe people will misunderstand that as an enterprise services portal. It's not for Unisys, even though we are one of the users. An enterprise services portal is a portal that is a single point of entry where a user, based upon their particular role and their persona, their particular use or use case within that role, gains the visibility and insight into the things that they need to know about and the ability to control and manage those functions within the enterprise that are specific to their role within the enterprise. It provides what we used to call a single pane of glass. Except for now, it's many panes of glass. It's a single pane of glass for that user, but it's thousands of panes of glass, depending upon how many different personas you have within the organization. And I'll get into the difference between persona and role in just a few moments. So what we wanted to do was to front end the services of our, across the entire $3 billion service delivery we had on an annual basis. We wanted to front end our service desk, we want to front end what we've launched in the last, since I started this project, we wanted to front end our cloud hosting and provisioning services, as well as our management services, allow users to request virtual servers, allow our, our Unisys employees to request, or our Unisys service agents to be able to request virtual computer equipment for our clients. We wanted to enable enterprise services management or systems management, such as tying into things such as Nagios and solar winds and monitoring systems that keep track of how are the different systems both at our client sites and within our data centers performing. Are there hacker attacks taking place when we get to security management services? We also needed to, in order to create an enterprise portal, tie into the financial systems. So now we're beginning the integration with financial systems, with HR systems, with marketing systems, so that we can bring those views, not just in terms of a, a service, an IT services point of view, but actually begin bringing information that's relevant to the management of the enterprise. Again, all through a, a LifeRay-based foundation. And as I said, we're doing this through role-based controlled access. And as we continue to evolve our portal, the roles become finer and finer as we continue to get more specific about each one of those individuals that's using the portal. And what our ultimate goal is, is as Brian was saying this morning, um, marketing is going to become the largest consumer. Well, I've been in marketing for 28 years and having come from a background of user experience, uh, one of the things I saw happening was the portal becoming the channel of marketing and sales for organizations as we move forward. So your traditional marketing organization will now become the portal. And your traditional sales organizations will become the portal. And once that portal becomes locked into an organization, you also have basically channel lock-in for your clients because they now depend on all the services you're providing through that portal. So where we're going with this is we want our users to be able to order their services, to configure their own services, whether it be in the cloud or within our, our data centers, 
to be able to monitor the performance of those services, such as you know, the data center services, the mainframes that are being supported, uh, the networks that are being monitored and managed, the endpoint, use, the endpoint mobile devices. We also want them to be able to now gain access to HR information, to financial information, to marketing information, all based upon many different sources of data. So it enables a user to be able to order, configure, monitor, manage, and support not their, only their IT, but actually their business functions as well. And as I said, we're doing that with LifeRay, and we're using LifeRay as an application aggregation and UI platform. So we're using LifeRay in the middle, and we're using it to support a common UI across all of our clients. So by the way, we're dealing with the Enterprise Edition. Currently, we have 65 global 1,000 companies on there. So these are typically a billion dollars in larger organizations. And we're using it as the application aggregator of all the backend systems, whether they be on the client site or within our data centers around the globe. And we're also using it as the platform to base the UI upon. Now, why did we choose LifeRay? We chose LifeRay because of its open source. That was one of the dictates of the CTO who asked me to leave my marketing function after 28 years and asked me to, said, and asked me to come in and help drive this portal project for Unisys. And he said it had to be open source. We were using SharePoint internally, which is a Microsoft product, but he said he wanted to go with something that was non-proprietary. He wanted to go with something that, because it's non-proprietary, is low cost. And we have had a lot of challenges of people bringing to us, because we're a technology firm, bringing to us many other portals, saying, well, what about using this portal? What about using that portal? We have been using the Oracle portal, by the way, previously. We, we moved on from that because it got to be so darned expensive. And for the small amount of money relative to the value that we get out of the enterprise edition of LifeRay 6.1, we're running close to 200,000 users on a single instance of LifeRay, which means we're paying one annual monthly fee, which is a tenth, if not a hundredth, the cost of what some of the other portal products would cost at that volume and throughput. So we picked it because it was a service-oriented architecture, non-proprietary, low cost, it served as an application integrator for us using the whole portlet concept, the plug and play of the portlets. Um, it had a content management system built into it. it. We used it as a collaboration tool for some of our clients for collaborating, taking advantage of some of the collaboration capabilities, and as an entire systems integrator to bring in whole systems into a single view. And that single view was something that was very important to our clients that they had, could stay in one environment and not have to leapfrog from, like as Brian was showing this morning, the idea of the hyperlinks of link jumping from portlet to portlet or, or application to application. Um, and the, one of the best things that we found was that our clients are very particular about their branding. When you're running 65 major corporations on a single instance of LifeRay, they don't all want to see it as Unisys, you know, their virtual service desk. They want to see their branding. So because of its customizability, not only from the plug and play portlets point of view, but also from the branding point of view, we found it ideally suited to do what we wanted it to do. And of course, we also picked it up because of its support for standards, such as the uh, Javelet portlet API. The plug and play portlets play a huge role because every customer gets a unique set of portlets for their particular portal. And again, remember we're doing this with a single instance of LifeRay, so all this is configured at runtime. And, it's at the, and at the time that the user logs in. So they also, they just got it once again, became a, were the leader in portlets, what they call horizontal portlets within the Gartner Group. And uh, that's how we use it internally to continue to sell why LifeRay is such a good, uh, good product for us to use internally. So it began, as I said, four years ago when I left the marketing organization. It began with end user self-service and support. Um, we support 11 languages, and I don't mean just in the user interface. We support 11 languages on our hotline, or basically our, our service support. Um, we have uh, about 4,000 agents worldwide, 24-hour support, um, that are providing basically telephone support. 
We also implemented, we integrated with Live Person. We integrated that into LifeRay. So uh, Live Person is an online chat tool. You'll find it on many, many websites where you initiate an online chat with a service agent. Um, we also keep track through a separate system called our customer issue system. We keep track of alerts and outages by client. So if there's going to be a system, there's a planned outage that we know that it's coming up, we can take care of that and put, put a notice up on all the end users saying this service is gonna be out. You will not have access to, to this particular service when this, uh, during this period of time. We also, uh, we have what we call alerts, which means a service goes out and we weren't planning on it. It shows up as a bright red indicator on their dashboard and we also have uh, reports for our operations. We also have an end user catalog where end users can order uh, hard disk drives, um, replace their computers. Um, they can order an on-site service agent to come and service their computer. So this is for the 65 companies that we're currently supporting. We also had dashboards or have dashboards available to report basically performance of the service desk. What's the backlog queue on the agents? both on the voicemail as also on the, um, uh, as well as on the chat queues. I, on, again, supporting 11 languages, we have to know who they are, what language are they speaking, and when they click on that to chat, we have to know that by person when they get to the agent, no matter where they are in the world, we have to get them to the agent that speaks the right language. And all that is being managed by LifeRay up front. And it also, one of the things, as I mentioned, it had to be client configurable. So one of the things that we did was we realized that we needed to take the uh, base LifeRay application, and this you're looking at the at this point at the old, uh, basically the virtual service desk, and uh, in the base template we would configure the portlets. We'd say these portlets in, these portlets are out, these portlets, and we basically would configure a set of portlets. We would then take, and we actually built another tool within LifeRay, which was called the Template Builder or the, basically the, the UI theme builder. And then what we did is began customized for every single client. You'll see some well-known names here, American Red Cross, Starbucks, Baxter Healthcare, uh, BT, um, Monet Hennessy. Um, this is just, these are just um, five or six of our 65 clients that are currently on the virtual service desk. And you notice the branding is completely different for each one of them. And that was done by providing a tool that through a form, our delivery organization can configure that overlay on top of every single one of those portals uh, to make it unique to that client. Remember, 65 clients running on one instance of LifeRay, what we call a multi-tenant environment. So the VSD today, we have out of the box, we have our own library of portlets. We have 50 configurable portlets, all designed with a common UI. So you notice the little images um, along the bottom here, that they look the same. That's because we took every one of our portlets and layered on top of that a common UI, so it was plug and play. Our original virtual service desk we built on the iGoogle model where you can plug and play your little windows or panels and it gives you a summary view. You click on that panel, it opens up the panel and it shows you a detailed view. So this whole thing was built, when I first designed it, was built upon the iGoogle model. You'll see we've changed that since then, or we're changing it. We have 175 registered users currently logging in on a regular basis into the virtual service desk. Um, with a potential of over half million. So in other words, you have a half million people out there that have this capability on their, on their laptop, the icons sitting on their laptop. Uh, by the way, it's only laptop only today, but the virtual service desk, but that's changing. And we generate 30,000 unique user sessions every single week. So that's about 5,000 user sessions every day. So now we move to something we're now branding as Unisys Vantage Point. So we take the four years of learning that we had with the virtual service desk, and what we've done is we brought a contemporary user interface, we brought in data visualization, we partnered with a company called uh, PureShare, brought in a, a data metrics capability which allows us to standardize on creating a dashboarding interface for, for LifeRay. We are multi-sourcing data. We're creating many new APIs and web services to access many different sources of data. 
Um, we, are, we are bringing in yet another tool called the PMG, which is a services catalog. So we're creating business to employee as well as business to business service catalogs so that you can order services not only from Unisys, but you can order services from within your organization. Employees can order services from their company. Employees can order services from Unisys. Employees can, businesses such as our customers can order, order uh, services directly from Unisys. And that, by the way, that new PMG product that we brought in and integrated with LifeRay, that supports service fulfillment even without our backend um, uh, basic services module. So it's all done through workflow through, um, through email. So Vantage Point itself is not a standalone offering. It is essentially a platform where we construct every, every single client a unique experience in terms of the portlets that are available and the GUI and the look and the feel. Vantage Point is therefore not standalone. It is defined by the context of the offerings that it presents. We're partnering with a with a firm now for about four months called SDG that's helped us design the new responsive design. There's been a lot of talk at this conference about web mobile responsive design. Well, that's what we've just created and that will be showing you that in a video in just a moment before I run out of time today. But we partnered with, a, it's a LifeRay partner, Solutions Design Group who's here in the room with us today. It has done a really fantastic job of creating a responsive design that works across many different platforms. And I'll just mention we've, this is like reading Brian's chart in reverse. We have put the end users on the left and the executives on the right. Well, he had the executives on the left and the end users on the right. But in the middle, he called them managers, we called them operations. But what we're doing with this is layering on top of that personas, which gets much more precise about who you are within the operations group. What are you responsible for? So we're taking it beyond roles and into what we're calling personas. So information is being thrown off by all these internal systems, whether it be um, things from MS Project, where we have managing projects for clients, you know, multi-million dollar projects, whether it's service desk, financial data, all that information is going to be sent out to individual personas, whether they be stakeholders, executives, managers, or even suppliers. But we put a layer in between called the operational data store. This is something that Unisys has developed and has been developing now for three years. Essentially, that normalizes the data, it scrubs the data, it does cross correlations between systems if there's any relationship for the data that's coming from different systems, and then it presents it back out as information to the end users. So we are presenting information that is based upon a whole set of data across multiple systems that's been consolidated, turned into metrics, as well as correlated and then presented to the users. And we put a lot of emphasis on dashboarding. So if we take information from not only systems that Unisys provides, but we also take information from systems that the client may already have in place as part of their IT systems. We then bring that into a dashboards metrics interface. And from that dashboards metrics interface, so we then push out the information in entirely visual formats. So what we're doing is we're moving from text-based oriented information communication to graphical-based information. And here's an example of the responsive design of our new interface that we actually are launching next month. You notice that we've adopted something that's some hybrid between, um, you might say, Windows tiles, except for they're much richer than Windows tiles. But that's the home page. And that home page, each one of those tiles is a portlet. And each one of those portlet has behind all the detailed information. So not only can we show responsive design, you'll see the same design functioning there on a, on a, on a full screen, on a laptop, on a tablet, and on a smartphone. And we program all of that using a series of technologies. And, and let me talk just a moment about our detailed pages. We then, if you click on any one of those panels, you dive down. And again, notice the rich interface, the GUI that we've created. This is all sitting on top of LifeRay, all this information. So we've created a very responsive, uh, very visually appealing. And I give credit to SDG for their their GUI design um, for the design, the graphics design that they've created for us. And we've done this from a responsive web point of view. 
And we've used uh, technologies such as HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, jQuery. And we've actually be, uh, primarily used a foundation, which is actually a comparable tool to Bootstrap, which is what they've now put into 6.2. But essentially, it's a responsive design framework that allows us to handle the movement between desktop, laptop, tablet, and smartphone. And all, it's all the smarts in it to make the adaptation. Now, we have to design three or four times, because we have to come up with a unique design for each one of those configurations but we're using a common website in a single source. So the data is all being driven from a single source. So what I want to do, and I'm going to go one or two minutes over, is play you a video. Um, it takes about six minutes, and it will show you uh, a CIO using Vantage Point, um, an operations person using Vantage Point, and then an end user using Vantage Point, which is all, this is all Liferay. So if we could start the video, and I'm going to wrap up with that. It plays for about six minutes. This is committed to delivering innovation and continuous improvement to our customers. The Unisys Vantage Point solution provides role-based personas, which give each user the tools to make the right decisions for the business, using role-relevant information geared to their business profile. We will focus on three role-based personas to illustrate rapid solutions to users' issues or requests and show how each designated user can solve issues and overcome challenges inherent to their roles. As the CIO of Multisys, William Jones and his team have undertaken an important migration program. Unisys Vantage Point helps William monitor his company's overall project status. Accessing the homepage, William notices that one of his projects is experiencing budget issues. He quickly drills down to the details page of the project and notices the project trend is affected by a budget overrun. Using the details Unisys Vantage Point provides, he contacts the project lead to review the issues at hand. In turn, a get well plan is implemented to reduce further cost overruns. A week has passed and William returns to the Unisys Vantage Point dashboard to monitor progress made. He notices all of his projects are showing expected positive outcomes. William goes to the details page of the affected migration project and reads positive comments added the same day by the project manager. Unisys Vantage Point provides a series of detailed and coherent visualizations that serve critical data, which executives can use to manage budget overruns. To support operations, Unisys Vantage Point is capable of displaying near real-time dashboards from multiple data sources and real-time on selected data sources. John Wilson is a Service Desk Operations Manager at Multisys. John uses Unisys Vantage Point to ensure that his on-site support teams are meeting their performance goals. From the home page, he navigates to the dashboard page and then to the Unresolved Incidents dashboard page. Critical incidents that are required to be fixed within four hours are represented in red, allowing him to quickly identify a potential risk with an on-site support team that has not yet attended to one or multiple critical incidents. By tapping the geo map, he detects that one on-site support team's queue contains at least one incident that requires attention. Tapping the red marker opens a tooltip that shows a critical incident in New York City has been open for an hour and 35 minutes. John asks one of his supervisors to open the incident on his laptop. The user who reported the issue is not able to perform an important backup that could significantly impact Multisys. Moreover, the service level management status warns that out of the four hours SLA, only two hours and 23 minutes remain to fix the problem. The incident console shows the team member who has been assigned to work on this incident. John talks to her supervisor to expedite the on-site visit and avoid a painful escalation. An hour later, Unisys Vantage Point shows that issue is resolved and there are no critical incidents. Using Unisys Vantage Point, John was able to find accurate information and act quickly on an issue. He was also able to make sure his teams performed the job on time. Unisys Vantage Point provides a flexible approach for self-service, which allows a user to submit, 
monitor and view requests or issues. Rachel Adams, a home knowledge worker, accesses Unisys Vantage Point for day-to-day -day support. Rachel's business smartphone is broken. Her manager advises her via email to request a new one. Rachel accesses Unisys Vantage Point from her laptop. She quickly navigates to the request tile and selects the type of request she wants to perform, which seamlessly opens the Unisys Vantage Point Basic Service Request Management System. Rachel scrolls down through the available requests to the telecommunication related requests and clicks mobile device request. In the mobile device request table, Rachel clicks request now and the request form appears. In this pop-up window, Rachel types in the required details and clicks the submit button. Rachel's submitted request gets captured under my requests. She clicks the details button double checks her request and clicks close. Her request complete, Rachel closes the Unisys Vantage Point Service Request Management Browser window. This brings her back to the home page of Unisys Vantage Point. In the My Requests tile, her mobile phone request appears and shows a green bar representing the timeline based on the service level agreements in gray. Unisys provides an advanced option to Unisys Vantage Point Basic Service Request Management System. It features extensive customer branding and customized request functionality. In this system, Rachel clicks Equipment and then Cell Phone. Rachel fills in the form. Requests go through an approval phase and Rachel sees her manager has already approved the request. She then adds it to cart. Now she submits the request. Working from home, Rachel used the service catalog components of Unisys Vantage Point to find an easy solution for her issue. The Unisys Vantage Point solution enables the many role-based personas within your organization to be more effective in making your business successful. Integration has never been more powerful. Look for even more from Unisys Vantage Point in future releases. Thank you.